So first up, this is concerning. I'm going to tell you why. So Russia and China are uh, going through a de-dollarization. And actually, in all, in all honesty, they really should have done this a long time ago. But uh, what's going on here? So the dollar's share of trade between Russia and China was only 46% of settlements in the first quarter. Why is this a big deal? Well, this was the first time the use of the U.S. dollar for settlement of trades has fallen below 50%. The euro uh, represented 30% of that, and the national currencies, uh, which would be uh, the Russian and the renminbi, how we say it for China, uh, was 24%, both of which were at an all-time high. So I saw this and I go, well, that's not so bad. You know, it's just dip below 50%. So, I mean, how much was it years ago? Well, here's how much it was. In 2015, just five years ago, about 90% of their bilateral transactions were conducted in USD. So you have to understand, in, in a five-year time frame, very short amount of time, uh, they've taken that and just say, you know what, we're not going to do this. And there's a reason why they did it. And I got to tell you, I don't see why it took them so long to do this. If I was uh, these countries, and thank God I'm not, because I'd be a horrible leader, uh, this is something that I would have got, gotten away from a long time ago. And I'm going to tell you why in a second. But Alexei Maslov, director of the Institute of Far Eastern Studies at the Russian Academy of Sciences, uh, states the Russian-China de-dollarization was approaching a breakthrough moment. Many expected that this would be a military alliance or a trading alliance, but that what really happened was it moved towards a banking and financial direction, and that is what can guarantee independence for both countries. And I got to tell you, if you're looking at military mites or alliance or trading or everything else, that's great. But really what moves the whole world, the whole global community, it's all about finances. So if you can pair yourself up and become the next financial superpower, so much the better. And I think that's where the big win is these days. So ING Bank's chief economist for Russia, Dmitry Dolgan, was quoted as saying this. And this is why... I was saying they should have done this a long time ago. Uh, not that I am, you know, rooting for Russia or China to take over, but I, just, you know, see like this is like a dull moment. He states any wire transaction that takes place in the world involving U.S. dollars is at some point cleared through a U.S. bank. That means that the U.S. government can tell that bank to freeze certain transactions, and it's true. I mean, the the United States can do that at any time. Just say, you know what, we don't like the transaction, stop it, and then sanctions come about. Pretty much. Uh, put that whole economy of another country into a standstill. And again, because the US dollar is the reserve currency of the global community, I mean, that's a lot of power uh, exercise over a lot of different nations. Anyhow, getting into the, the, the meat and potatoes, the SWIFT system, which sucks, which has traditionally been used for trade settlement, is overwhelmingly controlled by the US. So it is controlled by the US, but I had to take a look at that real quick because where is the actual um, you know, SWIFT society uh, where is it uh, you know, centered, I guess you could call it? So SWIFT is a cooperative society under Belgian law, owned by its member financial institutions with offices around the world. SWIFT's headquarters are at uh, in Belgium near Brussels. So um, unfortunately, though, it, uh, or fortunately, however you want to, want to look at it, it is really dictated by uh, American banks. Anyhow, here's where it gets interesting. So many countries are trying to construct their own alternative payment systems. For example, China launched a cross-border interbank payment system in 2015. Anyhow, global policies for de-dollarization include sharply reducing U.S. debt holdings, dropping U.S. dollar status as an anchor currency, increasing non-dollar bulk commodity trade, growing the reserve of non-dollar currencies, which they're doing right now, and ramping up gold's hedge against the dollar. And not only are they going to ramp up the gold's hedge, my big question is this. I'm going to ask you right now, listen to this video. Do you think other countries are buying up not just gold? Because we know they're buying gold, right? Gold is at an all-time high. But on the flip side, do you think they're also buying Bitcoin because they want to hedge their bet, just like other different types of investors are going, you know what? I think that Bitcoin could be great, maybe gold, but I don't like all this quantitative easing, all this money printing. I don't know the I don't know the what's going on with this economic policies of these different countries. I need to hedge my bet. If I had to if I was a betting man, I would say that other countries are buying up Bitcoin. Just a thought. Moving now, the Chinese government and major economic entities have recently begun to worry that they might end up in a similar situation as their Russian counterparts. They are concerned that they may become the target of sanctions and potentially even getting shut out of the SWIFT system, he explained. And this was actually a, a quote from Zhang Zhen, researcher of the Center for Russian Studies at Shanghai's East China University. Not only are they increasing their holdings there, but the Bank of Russia revealed early last year that it had slashed dollar holdings by over 100 billion, which account amounted to over half 
half of its existing dollar assets. The renminbi's share of Russia foreign exchange reserve went from 5% to 15% by investing $44 billion in China's currency. And I can only see this actually increasing as time goes on because it would only make sense for Russia and China to do the same thing. But here's the question that I have. How long do you think, because Russia and China are getting a lot, pretty close right now, how long do you think it's going to take before they start to decouple and fall out? Because how much trust is really there? Maybe they need a trustless type of system. And I put a little note here that I said U.S. is slipping on the global economic stage. And part of the reason is that banks, banks will not move out of the past. They are continuing to do the same thing. They are continuing to do the same types of actions, the same type of outdated technology and the same type of outdated thinking. And they're not even in the 20th century, it seems like. So I'll just say this. I know your your brain's probably spinning right now and think about different things that you know could be. What about a central bank digital coin? What about XRP? What about another type of cryptocurrency? What about Bitcoin and something like that? And I can just tell you this, that um, central bank digital coins are coming. The CBDCs are coming. Uh, every nation is experimenting with it. Uh, China is uh, beating the pants off everybody. Uh, they actually have rolled it out and are actually testing it in certain parts of China. The problem with all CBDCs, everything about it, is that it is tied to a failed economic policy for that country. So if you're gonna look at different things and go, well, it, will these CBDCs work? Well, maybe in the short term. But if you look at, if you have an option to use any type of CBD, a central bank digital coin, and it is now a global community, why wouldn't you use something that has uh, one of the best economic policies that cannot be fluctuated, cannot have quantitative easing, cannot uh, be manipulated, be something like, I don't know, pick your favorite digital currency and uh, or digital asset and let me know in the comment section. But I have mine. Let me know what yours are. I just don't see that. I think CBDCs are just a stopping point or just a step over or a stepping stone until we get to the main one, which is fill in the blank. Anyhow, speaking about banks and slowness, let's go to the next article.